Can you give me examples um, for those who haven't been here, right? Yes. Examples of some of those best teaching practices that have really um, been important to your teaching. Um, I think it's been related to, well, so for instance, um, the use of a concept-based learning activity mm -hmm. in clinical. Um, this is completely from um, ACNE mm -hmm. processes, and I had never done this before. I need to understand it better as an outsider, so okay. just describe how you go about preparing a concept-based uh, clinical activity. activity. Um, I think there's multiple ways to do it. Um, what I what I tend to do with my students, I, for instance, I do one on fluid and electrolytes every time with students because it's fundamental to pediatrics. And so, what it is, my understanding of it is, my goal is to help them develop a deeper understanding of the issues by seeing essentially multiple cases of the same thing. Okay. So. I um, I happen to use um, this term the day after um, Martin Luther King, for instance, because mm -hmm. students can't prepare for their patients. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to give them patients the next day. So we'll do an activity like this, mm -hmm. and I give them a patient that I um, pick out for them, and they will do some basic assessment and um, chart review. Mm -hmm. And they will then think through the fluid and electrolyte issues of that particular child, their pathophysiology, how does that affect it, what does, what does the fact that it's a three-month-old, how does that impact fluid and electrolytes? Or maybe this is a 14-year-old or something else like that. So both development <clears throat> excuse me, and um, pathophysiology what meds might they be on, how might that um, Im put them at risk. Mm -hmm. And then they need to think through what's the nursing care that we would do for this patient. Um, and then we all come together in a big room like this, mm -hmm. like we did today, and we go over what how, let's remind ourselves, just the basic physiology around fluid and electrolyte management. What does that look like that in children? And in this case, often I need to bring in a short little micro-teach around um, the developmental aspects mm -hmm. of fluid and electrolytes. Um, so we will do that, and we start talking about who are the kids that are at risk for this. And then essentially we'll go through each of the cases mm -hmm. and we'll go through in depth um, for at least three or four, sometimes more. And we look at their signs and symptoms, we look at their weight, we figure out their maintenance fluids, we look at um, were they treated, did they come in with dehydration and received a flu fluid bolus? If they did, how much? What kind of fluid? Um, how are they doing now? Um, what treatment was done, and then we analyze all of our noticing data. It's like, all right, now that we have all of this, is this child at risk for a fluid imbalance? If so, what is it inadequate or is it overload? And do they have a risk for electrolyte imbalance? And what would that be? And how would we treat that? So then we take that patient and set it aside and go to the next one. And then in the very end, the goal is to compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. It's like how, so we had three cases um, of children at risk for dehydration. What did, what did you notice? What was the important pieces? What was the first data that would have told us that this was a risk for them. Um, and so we look for the themes and um, the ways in which um, maybe it looks slightly different in this case. Oh, this was um, the reason why this kid is at risk for dehydration is because they're NPO for surgery. Well, this one's at risk for dehydration because they are, um, you know, they're vomiting. Mm -hmm. 
There's and all of these different causes, but we still have the same problem, mm -hmm. and we will treat it in much the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking for those common themes, mm -hmm. and um, usually there's just a much deeper understanding. I was just thinking, this is such a great example of deep learning. Yes, and. Surely there isn't a concept that's more pervasive than <laughs> electrolyte and fluid balance. Yes. It's a great example. And so I believe that that is an example of a way that I have developed mm -hmm. that I did not do before. Mm -hmm. And I see the depth in, in student understanding mm -hmm. when we're done. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. What advice would you give to a beginning teacher who's teaching clinical? Mm. My first advice um, is to ask more questions. Um, ha stop yourself from giving the answers mm -hmm. and continue to ask the questions. Um, I would also say be clear about your goals. What is it that you're trying to do? Um, look for ways to explicitly tie theory to practice. Mm -hmm. Students need teachers often to make those links visible for them. Um, some of them will just make those connections all on their own and others will not. Even if they do all the right things, they may not understand the bigger picture. And that is the job of the faculty, I believe. Mm 